Thank you for having me here and also for letting me speak in English. I think I've got a ways to go on my Icelandic. Um, if I have a few drinks with you later, maybe I'll try a few more words. Um, so, I'm in Iceland. This is amazing. This is one of the places, um, it's kind of on your list of, I really want to go there, but how will I ever make that happen? But um, I got a call from the organizers and they invited me to come and speak. I work on a startup, so I have hopefully something in common with many of you. How many of you uh, in the audience work on a uh, startup or run your own business? How many of you are entrepreneurs? This is so awesome. So I was kind of blown away. I didn't know a lot about Iceland. Um, I mean, I knew the geography, which was, I thought, a really good thing as an American to actually have figured out. But um, the other thing I didn't really realize was just... Um, the population is actually so small, and when I heard there were hundreds of startups, I was kind of shocked. Like, wait a second, we're having a hard time getting hundreds of startups in London, or hundreds of startups in Seattle, but there are hundreds of startups in Iceland. Uh, and then they told me there would be 100 or 150 people here, uh, and I was thinking, like, ratio-wise, if the population is around 300,000, and you get 150 people here, that's like in the U.S. getting 150,000 to come out. It's kind of amazing the percentage of people who give a damn about this kind of stuff. So I, then I was thinking, like, this could be a really good place for me to move. Like, I could fit in a lot better here. So I was thinking about, um, you know, what, what can I share with you that's useful? Um, you know, what are my stories that mean something um, that translate well? And I was thinking about uh, Seattle, which is where I'm from. So I live in Silicon Valley now because it's kind of where you need to go to start a startup uh, and increase your odds. But... I'm from Seattle and I'm really passionate about building great startup communities because I think my career would never have really happened if I hadn't been surrounded by supportive people. Uh, and Startup Weekend is a big part of that. So global entrepreneurship is going on this week. And Startup Weekend, for the small percentage of you who might not know about it, is this 54-hour hackathon slash kind of business plan mashup with you know, people who have no idea what they're doing with their lives. And we all get together, we form teams, we pitch ideas, um, we poach people from other teams, we, our ideas fall apart, and at the end, some of us pitch uh, final presentations. And it's very empowering, right? It, you get this moment where you realize, oh, I, I could like, not go back to work on Monday. I could just do this. I could just stay here. I could just stay with these people, this team that I've bonded with, and I could just change my entire life. Like My life could go in a completely different direction after that weekend. And I think the really powerful thing about that is that's actually true all the time. It's very clear at the end of Startup Weekend that you could do it because you have this very clear thing to go do. But actually, every minute in our lives is a minute to just say, you know what, this isn't working for me, I'm not happy, I'm waking up in the morning and I, I'm the no in my life. I'm telling myself, you have to keep doing this. No, you can't go live that other dream. And that's ridiculous. Why be the no in your own life? Like, there's already enough people telling you, you can't do that, it's too risky, you're crazy, I dropped out of college, my parents thought I was an idiot. Um, I quit a higher paying job to take a lower paying internship. My parents thought I was an idiot. My parents and I get along really well now, but in a way, that's only because what I'm doing is working. <laughs> it's rough. I mean, it's a very different world that we live in than what our parents lived in, and, and I love them. Um, they're entrepreneurs too, which is the funniest part. So I think they were kind of saying no because they knew like I was going to go through all the pain that they went through, and they wanted me to just have, I don't know, a comfortable existence. But it's not really comfortable to be comfortable because you kind of have those moments where you're like, what am I doing? Is, is this it? You know, I'm, 20, I'm 26 now. When I was 23, I think I had an existential crisis like every weekend at the end of work. I was like, what am I doing? Oh, God, Monday. And I had a cool job. I had a great job, right? It, every, outwardly, it looked like success. I was making good money, wore a suit every day. My parents were proud of me, Fortune 500 company. That looks... Great, you can tell people that and they'll tell you, wow, you're, you're really doing really good for 23, especially a college dropout. And you're like, well, I pretty much am gonna be working for this company the rest of my life. Are you, what are you gonna tell me when I'm 60? And they would have been like, yeah, okay, so you're gonna be really, really unhappy, but no one's gonna tell you that. So Startup Weekend is just one of so many things that you can do to start thinking about how you might envision your life. Like TED is a great chance to just hear other people and I think another huge thing um, that I realized is traveling the world is a great way to get perspective. And um, coming here, I, so I did do a lot of tourism, um, and I did drive one of those super Jeeps, which is amazing, and it makes me want to move here just for that, and live somewhere where I have to drive it to get there. <laughs> would be ideal. 
Um, but traveling and just meeting people and talking to people and my incredible hosts, it really makes you realize just how many options there are in life and in the world. And I think for students, that, you know, we want them to do tech because we want programmers and we want people to build companies. But for everyone, people on Main Street, uh, I heard there's some folks who are basically fishermen who are doing Startup Weekend. And that's really cool. I mean, that is so different from what Startup Weekend is in Silicon Valley. But the idea that they can take a look at internet technology or having a Facebook page or hiring some college kid to uh, build them a website and that that's uh, the direction that their business could go, that's, that's a pivot. I mean, fishermen make a lot of money. That's a huge business. It's a huge industry here. There's a ton of technology going into it. So we can't just be thinking about web tech. We actually need to be thinking about how can we make every single person uh, have a successful path they actually want to be on so they're saying yes to their life every day. I heard the birth rate in uh, Iceland is really high. It's like 2.3 children for every family. And that's pretty awesome. That's not like the rest of Europe. I think the US is maybe somewhere near there. But I always think somewhere with a high birth rate has a lot of optimism about the future if you want to bring kids into the world. But if we're going to bring all these kids about, we probably should think about how we can make sure they get to work on stuff they want to do. So instead of our parents asking us, you know, what are you going to do when you grow up? The question might be, what are you going to make when you grow up? Like, what are you, what are you passionate about? What, you know, and the kids don't know, and that's actually okay, but to set up enough different things like Startup Weekend, like building cars in university where they can actually try things out and figure out where they're headed. I think um, you're very fortunate in a way to have a population that's small and has a high percentage of people who care about entrepreneurship because if you keep that percentage as the country grows, you're going to have a really awesome situation. I would really like to live in a place like that. Um, and I think you'll have a lot of happy people that you want to be around, which is my kind of personal uh, mission. So you guys have to tell me if I run out of time, by the way. I'm just going to keep talking. Um, so why do I work on startups? Um, and tying that back to all of this, because obviously um, I spend some portion of my time getting to do cool things like this and speaking to you, and a whole other part of my time kind of suffering for a very good cause, I would say, working uh, on a startup. But one thing that's amazing to me about Twilio and you can ask me about it, what it is later because it's probably too complicated to explain, but the fundamental thing is when you build something that solves other people's problems, it's kind of amazing to see the impact of that. And I think the realization in a community is we're all building things that solve each other's problems. We all produce and then we all consume. And I think one of the things I would really love to kind of start a conversation about with all of you and just kind of globally is we really focus a lot on being great producers and making things, but we should focus on being great consumers too. I think it's really important. So walking down the street, the main street up here, I noticed how many clothing stores there are and how much great design there is and how pretty much every store I walked by, I was like, okay, I have to go in there. My mom's going to want that. My sister, like, this is so unique. This is so beautiful. And I felt like to have all of that on, you know, one street or it, in what I would call, like, you know, not a huge city, but it's all desirable. I want to consume all of it. And I think as a consumer, it's actually really exciting and it made me kind of think maybe there's something here that that um, we don't have in, in the US and I, I've been thinking about a lot. We talked about Walmart last night at dinner and there's something about consumption that when you do it online or you do it at scale in some huge store, something's missing and I almost feel like maybe there's something really special here around having like discerning taste or appreciating craftsmanship and maybe that could come through in startups and maybe that's something that's missing because a lot of stuff feels very mass produced. I mean, we were talking about, again, last night we had this broad ranging conversation and we talked about copycats of startups, kind of just taking Airbnb or taking Groupon and copying that idea. And that doesn't really care about the consumer. It's just kind of saying like that, you know, that makes money, let's go do it. But there's so much that's um, crafted and bespoke about, like it's kind of what I've seen that's so interesting. And you have the chance to pick and choose and care about consumers a lot more. And since you're all your own target market here, you have a chance to get a lot of really amazing feedback. Um, so I don't really have, um, I guess, prescriptive advice because I think what you're doing is what you're doing. And I think what happens is going to emerge very organically. But the fact that there's eight tech events here, the fact that there's hundreds of startups, I think if I could make one suggestion, it would be to make sure I'm making a lot of noise about what's happening in Iceland because I'm not sure that the world knows yet and I think there's really great people trying to make that happen. Uh, I think this is a very exciting place to start business. I would love to see my company be able to hire people here, to be able to start an office here and I think if 
the world knows all that's going on outside, and it's not just your own target market. I think there's a huge opportunity. Uh, and I'm very, very excited to come back and participate in Startup Weekend. So if you haven't tried one of these events um, or met the organizers of this event, do make sure to come to just one thing and think about if you're doing what you want to be doing every morning when you wake up and if maybe Startup Weekend or something else could be the chance for you to say yes to something different. Thank you.